This is a $2 million Aston Martin DBR22 supercar. It's a beautiful thing. And this is a cheetah as a non extubatus, the uncontested supercar of the animal kingdom. And an even more beautiful thing. If ever they were forced into a race to see which could hit 60 miles an hour first, my money would be on the super cat, which can hit that speed from a standing start in less than three and a half seconds. The cheetah is, of course, the fastest land animal alive, a biomechanical masterpiece built for one thing and one thing alone, speed, all other priorities rescinded. But is it the fastest land animal ever? And this is the extinct supersized American cheetah, Mirasononyx trumani, an Ice Age North American predator that was also clearly optimised for speed. It was bigger than the living cheetah, but was it faster? If you'd like to find out the answer to this question and get up to speed on the latest research into this extraordinary cat, keep watching. Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a real paleontologist, and you're watching Real Paleontology. And today we're focusing on the American cheetah, or should I say cheetahs, because there are two species recognised, Mirasononyx trumani and Mirasononyx inexpectatus. Now, the first thing I've got to point out is that American cheetahs were not closely related to the living species of cheetah. Their closest living relative is, in fact, the mountain lion or puma. Mirasononyx trumani is the more obviously optimised for speed. So I'm going to concentrate on this species, which has been found widely across the USA and possibly even into Mexico. From now on, when I talk about Mirasononyx, I'm talking about Mirasononyx trumani. So what are the basics and what does the latest science tell us about how it lived? Well, the American cheetah was an Ice Age cat that went extinct around about 13,000 years ago. Like I said up front, it was, at least superficially, very similar to the living cheetah. In fact, for a while, it was placed in the same genus. The many shared features between the living and extinct species are mostly associated with selection for speed and acceleration. These include relatively long limbs, a lightweight body, a flexible spine, a very long tail, and a deep set chest. I'll get into shared features of the skull in a bit more detail later. Now, just looking at their skeletons, at first glance, you could be forgiven for mistaking them as the same species, but for one very obvious difference. The American cheetah was much larger. How much larger? Well, where the living cheetah weighs in at an average of around 50 kilos or 110 pounds, the average for Mirasononyx was around 83 kilos or 183 pounds. And the maximum was around 120 kilos, 265 pounds. So it was at least 50% heavier. If you're familiar with the American cheetah, you probably know that it's long been argued that its main prey was the North American pronghorn antelope, which, confusingly enough, wasn't actually an antelope. Its closest living relatives are giraffes and acarpies, according to the latest research by Chinadel 2019 here. Anyway, the suggestion that Mirasononyx regularly preyed on the prong is based on the fact that the pronghorn is the world's second fastest terrestrial animal, with a top speed of around 55 miles per hour, or 89 kilometres per hour. The reasoning here is that there's never been a North American predator, other than the American cheetah, that could have conceivably attained speeds even close to this. And if there wasn't a predator capable of matching such high speeds, then why evolve the capacity to do so? In short, the argument is that these two species done got themselves locked into an evolutionary arms race. This is certainly logical, but a long way from certain and very hard to prove. However, recent work published in 2023 here by Higgins and friends, has finally provided some backup for this hypothetical arms race between the cheetah that's not a real cheetah and the antelope that's not a real antelope. 
analysis of isotopes in bone retrieved from Natural Trap Cave in Wyoming suggests that Miracinonics were eating pronghorns, at least in that part of North America. So considered together with the many anatomical features mentioned above that it shares with its living African counterpart, these results are certainly consistent with the proposition that Miracinonics evolved to fill a very similar ecological niche to that of the African cheetah. That is, as a high performance specialist pursuit predator of fleet-footed prey in open savanna or prairie-like habitats. Of course, that's not quite that simple, otherwise I could pretty much end this video here. There are other recent studies that complicate the picture. In this 2022 paper, John Paul Hodnett and friends report on findings from a cave deposit in the Grand Canyon. These include fossils of an adult and juvenile American cheetah. This was obviously not open savanna kind of habitat, and the most abundant potential prey species were not pronghorns, they were mountain goats. So, open mostly flat habitats may have been preferred by Miracinonics, but it seems they were definitely adaptable enough to occupy quite different environments and take quite different kinds of prey. Perhaps this is not entirely surprising because it's also clear that although living cheetahs prefer open flat terrain, some populations occupy more mountainous habitats. This seems to be especially true for the Asiatic cheetah, a critically endangered subspecies now found only in Iran. Now, aside from some general similarities between the skeletons of the living cheetah and Miracinonics, there are a number of shared features in the skull. As noted by Slater and Van Valkenburg 2008 here, they are both relatively small, lightly built, and high domed. This is likely related to expanded nasal passages, facilitating greater airflow during the cat's explosive chase. It's often assumed that this lightweight skull means that the cheetah had a relatively weak bite. My own work here suggests otherwise. In this 2005 paper, we predicted bite forces for a bunch of mammalian carnivores. The cheetah actually performed better than your average cat for its size. This conclusion was supported in this later study wherein we compared the capacities of their skulls to withstand high bite forces. Again, the cheetah performed surprisingly well. Although no one has performed studies like this on the American cheetah, I strongly suspect that they too were also capable of a surprisingly powerful bite. The reason for this is because their faces are relatively short. This gives them a real leverage advantage, meaning that they can achieve higher bite forces using less muscle force, which puts less stress on the skull. Okay, so we've accounted for most of the similarities between the living cheetah and Miracinonics. Clearly, they're associated with selective evolutionary pressure for speed. However, two pretty recent studies complicate the picture some. First up, let's look at this paper by Borgia Figueredo and friends, published in 2023. These guys compared the anatomy of the elbow joint in the American cheetah to that of other cats. The objective was to determine the ability to perform supination at this joint. What is supination, you ask? Well, Three bones are involved in the elbow joint, the humerus or upper arm bone and the radius and ulna, the bones of the forearm. Supination is where you rotate your hand or paw away from the midline of your body like this. Why is this important? Bottom line is a greater capacity for supination translates into a greater range of motion. For a cat, this means a greater capacity to manipulate its prey. But, as I've stressed in earlier episodes, every adaptation comes at a cost. There's always a trade-off. More flexibility at the elbow joint means that the animal needs more muscle to stabilize the joint in order to prevent damage to ligaments and possible dislocation. More muscle means more weight, and more weight means less speed. So, what did Borgia and friends find? Well, they found that the living cheetah's capacity for supination at the elbow was clearly limited compared to other cats. As expected, it was sacrificing mobility at the elbow for speed. What about Miracinonics? 
Well, interestingly, the American cheetah's elbow joint was more like that of the puma than the African cheetah's. In short, it was not fully optimized for speed. Now, an earlier study led by Borgia Figueredo, published in 2018, focused on a very different part of the American cheetah's anatomy, its brain. These guys cat scanned the skull of Miras and Onyx and a range of other cats to produce digital models of their skulls and endocasts of their brains. The results were intriguing. An obvious feature of the African cheetah's brain was that it was more rounded than any other living cats. In Miras and Onyx, the brain was also quite globular, although this feature was not as pronounced. More detailed comparisons of brain morphology suggested that the American cheetah had superior hearing and vision relative to the puma and superior motor complexity relative to the cheetah. They attributed this to the fact that Merosynonix had fully retractable claws and more dexterity in its forepaws. The take home from this study is that the American cheetah's brain was better adapted to complement a high speed pursuit predator's lifestyle than the brain of its closest living relative, the puma, but less well adapted to life in the fast lane than the living cheetah. Now, there is one last very relevant recent paper to cover here. But before we dive into that, can I ask that you please like and subscribe to my little channel? It costs you nothing, but it could really make my day. In this paper, the authors discovered that there are two main factors that place absolute physical limits on how fast an animal can run. Importantly, they also found that the size of the animal plays a key role in setting these limits. These limits are how fast muscles can contract versus by how far muscles can contract. In the words of one of the authors, Professor Chris Clemente from the University of Queensland, animals about the size of a cheetah exist in a physical sweet spot at around 50 kilograms, where these two limits coincide. These animals are consequently the fastest reaching speeds of up to 105 kilometers per hour. So not only is the living cheetah fully optimized for speed in terms of its anatomy, from its outsized nasal passages through its long flexible spine right down to the tips of its non-retractable claws, it's also the perfect size. What does this mean in terms of its behavior? Well, obviously, it means that the considerably heavier American cheetah did not hit this sweet spot. Putting all this together, then, I think we can now confidently answer the question we opened with. There is no doubt that Mirasononix was built for speed and acceleration, perhaps more so than any other cat living or extinct, except one, the cheetah. I think it's extremely unlikely that the American cheetah could have hit 60 miles an hour in less than three and a half seconds or maxed out at speeds exceeding this. Maybe it was the second fastest terrestrial mammal of all time, but there's no way it was the fastest. It filled a different niche, one at least slightly less reliant on speed and more reliant on a capacity to bring down and manipulate prey, routinely bringing down animals close to its own size, as do other living big cats, except the cheetah which generally targets prey around half its size or smaller. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little episode. If you have any further questions, let me know in the comments section. Also, let me know which super predator you would like me to look at next. I'll be back with another episode next week. Take care till then, and don't forget to like and subscribe.